So this is the familiar sight of coats and hoodies and what have you. And I'm staring thinking there's an alternative to this. I know there is. How about a nice bit of that? So it starts off as, like everything else with drawings and ideas and uh, you draw the pretty things that you can imagine, little shelves and details and what have you. And that leads you to a trip to the lumber yard. And I come back with five planks, about 18 mil thick, 2.4 meters long or something like that. I don't know how wide it was, but um, I cut them up to an approximate length. And um, I have a width in mind and it, it just has to be uh, narrow enough to accommodate the gap that I've got there because I've got a, a light switch on one side and the, the edge of a curtain pole. And by jiggling these things around, I can, I can actually find boards that uh, uh, suit being next to one another and it minimalizes the possibility of having to do any jointing, which isn't uh, something I want to do. And then I decide that I'm gonna mark them out for tongues and grooves and by marking them in such a way, um, it means that I don't inadvertently put a groove on the wrong side. And here I've got a tongue and groove set. This particular piece is the, uh, is the tongue. And um, I noticed at this stage that I need to change the throat plate. So I pop that out and put a wider one in. Now these boards, like every board that you buy from the hardware store, they will cup. So I wanna get this done relatively quickly. And, um, and because you can't guarantee that you can totally centralize this, even though I can micro adjust this, um, this router a table up and down you know, to a fraction of a millimeter, you can never get it exactly right. So I need to make sure that all the boards are cut with you know, a dedicated upside and a de dedicated downside. So um, every time I'm using the router, I'm always making sure that the fence is, uh, is flush with the bearing. And there we are, nice tongue. So it's a rinse and repeat, and do that to, uh, I think, uh, two or three of the boards I've got to do. And it works really nicely. Time to remove it and change it, and, uh, and put in the, the cutter for the tongue. And uh, the best way to achieve this is to uh, actually put in uh, the, um, the tongue that I've cut, and then make the board line up. And that's how it works. then a nice dry fit and thinking about it in the days before plywood existed if someone wanted to make a wide panel this would be the only real way you could do it um, and it's very strong and you'll see that once I've put this together I'm just uh, dropping it around and bashing it and it, it feels real solid then I dis mantle it and uh, stack the, uh, the planks together really so I can give them one final cut to make sure they are absolutely identical in length. And as I say, I'm not too fussed about the, the length. I know roughly what I want, so um, I don't mind you know, shaving off a quarter of an inch or whatever it might be. Now a bit of hand sanding, um, which is easy on the tongues, but a bit harder on the grooves. And um, all tongue and groove has got um, a very small chamfer, both on the, uh, the tongue side and on the groove side. So I need to replicate that. So it's back over to the router table. And now I can remove the, uh, the tongue cutting bit and I can replace that with uh, a nice chamfer cutting piece and I'm not going to be able to do or I'm not going to be able to cut the tongue side I'm only going to be able to cut the tail side so whatever I produce with this um, um, router I'm going to have to completely mimic by hand so again I'm just going to make sure that bearing is nice and flush with the uh, fence and I'm just uh, closing up the fence gap there to augment uh, the suction and then just run it through so it's always best to take a, uh, you know a little bit and you can always take more but you can't add so I'm just checking it to see uh, 
if it's what I like. And um, and you can see it's just a nice little uh, nice little chamfer there. I haven't got a lot of meat to work with, so um, I'm happy with that. And then it's rinse and repeat, and then uh, all the other boards. So at this stage, um, I'm going to just really do this by eye to make sure that it matches that that's been achieved on the router table. And you can see the boards are already starting to get a little bit of a cup. So um, I really want to get this done today. It probably takes what, two or three passes to, to get that little chamfer, but it works well. homemade tongue and groove so you could just buy this I mean I just chose to make it because um, I've got the tools and I wanted to have particularly wide boards but uh, you don't have to you could just buy it or you could buy floorboards that were tongue and groove together and then you could manually put those uh, those chamfers in yourself and here I'm just playing around with the idea of the top and the shelf so this is looking at the, the side of it and the way things are at the moment is I'm going to have to, or I think it would be a good idea to put a board going across here so that I can put the clothes hooks in. I've still got a couple of these boards left and what I was thinking was is that if I was to put that board up there, what I could do is I could, want to, I want to make an area up here for putting in like hats and gloves and stuff like that. So I was thinking that if I was to if I was to cut that on the bandsaw like that, I would get this bit in, in encapsulated, and this would be a nice little detail. So I think I think that could be the next thing that I'm going to do. On top of that, I want to cut a dado into these boards here, so that this plank, this shelf that goes along here, actually sits in a groove here. So there is some kind of physical connection for the joinery. So here I'm removing the thin curved blade and um, I'm replacing it with a sandwich of three blades. Anyone interested in uh, how you put uh, a stack of three blades on a UK DW745 then uh, you can actually watch a video that I've produced which is called um, DW745 Cutting Dados or alternatively you can look in the top right hand corner my name Sean Hughes and go to the YouTube channel and you can pick it out from there. But it, it produces very nice dados and it's uh, it's a great time saver. So here, these are the sides and I'm just uh, trimming uh, just a little bit off the, um, the width of the board so that it's flush with that shelf, um, but uh, allows the very top board to overhang. And now I'm deciding where I'm gonna make um, an approximate cut and um, as long as I know how wide, for instance, where I'm marking at the moment is where I want it to start, when I want, where I want the curve to finish. So this is a good little trick. Take the two boards, know roughly where you're gonna cut out that material and then uh, nail gun them together. And then it means you can work on them as one board. And then when you separate them, um, you'll have two identical boards. So here I am um, cutting out that radius and uh, I then switch off the machine and then um, actually put on a little fence and start the cut and then take it off 
and then put it on the table saw because obviously that is uh, that cuts a much straighter line. And then um, once that's done, I can then uh, the boards will be ultimately separated, but I'll hold them together, put them in the vise, and then I'm just going to finesse them with the uh, with a belt sander. And the ideal tool really for this would be the oscillating spindle sander, but I don't have one of those. I'll have to wait for Father Christmas. And um, at a later stage, I will put uh, a round over on the, the outside of this just to make it smooth to the touch, because obviously this is you know for hanging clothes, so you don't want really sharp edges. So I'm pretty happy with what it looks like at the moment. That looks good. So it's time for uh, a little dry fit and, uh, and hope that I get some inspiration. I'm just looking at the, the bottom thinking, oh, what can I do? And um, I decide that I need to finesse the sides a little bit more and actually find that by placing the belt sander in the vise and taking the work to the belt sander in this particular situation, uh, I can get uh, more control over it. So with that complete, um, this is actually the shelf that I'm working on and all I'm doing is I'm just taking the, the, the rough ripped edge and I just went over it with a hand plane to smooth it up and then put it back in situ. So we're at a point now where um, I've got kind of like the shape that I want but from a perspective of how this is constructed I've, I've got a couple of changes so you can see that these boards are rebated into these side boards here and at the moment I've got a top that fits there and I kind of I'm, I'm happy with the look of things but I don't like the fact that this is all going to be end grain going into face grain here so in order to get around that what I'm going to do is take these sides off and then put this on the uh, table saw with a dado stack I'm going to cut a dado out which means that I can make a plank that fits across here and with that then dadoed into here it'll it'll add further strength and it means that you'll have two pieces of uh, effectively face grain uh, going together rather than end grain to face grain so that's what I'm going to do next that's the next job and I've got the remains of this uh, this plank down here that I can use and I might uh, I might, uh, while I've got the dado out, I might cut a couple of notches in here so that it allows me to fit a board to go in that side as well. So um, that's what you're about to watch me do. So it's back to the table saw and um, I'm just nibbling away enough in order to be uh, in a position to be able to sink in that, uh, that very top piece of timber. And at the same time, I take the sideboards and by just uh, taking a cut and then moving the fence over, I actually create uh, rebates for the side so that the, the back tongue and groove actually melts into the sideboards. It's the best way for me to describe it. And it's around this stage really where um, I finish the whole thing off in one go. I've got pretty much the basic shape and uh, off camera. I assemble it, um, glue it, nail gun it, and uh, make a little freeze, and there we go. That's the finished item in all its glory. And my girlfriend asked me to make it so that it would accommodate uh, holding umbrellas. And it does. It looks good, and I'm really happy with it. So listen, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope this gives you some ideas. And as always, like, subscribe, comment.